Okay, this is the KL Audio Ultrasonic Record Cleaning Machine, the KD CLN LP200. Uh, it's, it's designed in America. It's made in South Korea. It's similar conceptually to the audio desk. As you can see, there's a tank here filled with fluid. Um, this thing is built really, really strongly. It's metal. It's got handles. And you can adjust the washing temperature. I mean, the washing um, amount. You can't adjust the temperature. What an idiot. And uh, the drying time. Or you can wash and dry or dry only. And you can put your light loads in here and it'll do nylons. In. No, okay. Okay, so here's how it works. It's very similar to the audio desk, but uh, as you can see, there are, there are no rollers in here and there's a very thin slot. And it's plasticky, hard plastic on the sides here. So you have to be very careful putting it in. You don't want to scratch your record, right? So you put it in like that, and it beeps, and it automatically starts. See, it's priming now. The fluid is now being drained from the tank. It's going in, and now that sound is the ultrasonics going. And now the liquid is going on the record. And that's basically the, how it works. So that's all I'm going to show you there. Now I'm going to come around the back, because I'm going to show you what is going on in the back although it's pretty not too well lit back here um, there's a there's this drain valve which is very good and there's a pressure fitter uh, on here to drain it which there's a tube that attaches to this and it makes it easy to drain also there is a um, a large opening in the back you can get to the fluid get to the inside of the tank and clean it out so I've been using it now for a couple of weeks to make sure that it, it's reliable. It is reliable and it costs about the same as the audio desk. What's interesting about this machine is that they don't recommend you use any kind of cleaning fluid. It's purely water. And while it, it looks like it, the water's not getting all over the record, actually it, it really is because the vat's full. The thing is, there are no, there are no surfactants, in, surfactants in the fluid, so you see how the water beads up. So I'm not quite sure what they're going for there. Um, and there are no rollers, so there's nothing to spread the fluid around. And the other thing I'm worried about, concerned about, there's two things to be concerned about. One is that the dirt that is being removed from the record is, is in suspension in the water. So it's, it has to be applied back to the record unless it's, it sits at the bottom. Even the spin clean has a chemical that uh, kind of glob, globs up the dirt and, and makes it sink to the bottom. I'm not sure what happens here. I haven't emptied it out yet. When I empty the tank out, that's when I'll write about it because that's when I'll see what's inside the, um, inside the water. The other thing is the amount of ultrasonic is, is pretty critical. If you, if you put too much ultrasonic uh, pressure on a record, it could probably damage it. In fact, the Audiodesk inventor says he worked with an electron microscope and um, looked at records with varying amounts of ultrasonic energy applied to records and he found that too much ultrasonic energy could actually damage the records and, and chip off the very fine high frequency etchings in the groove. I'm not sure what kind of research was done by the people that invented this machine or whether they just sort of looked at the audio desk and knocked it off uh, without paying attention to this, but nonetheless, I'm a, I'm cleaning a a uh, a Mercury Living Presence promo record because I do this to sacrifice for the readers. I I sacrifice the records. I have a lot of records, so it's not like I'm worried about not having enough records. Uh, and we'll see how clean this comes out at the end. So it's still going through the. It's on the la you can see it's on the last stages of the washing cycle, and in another couple. Uh, now, now what's happening is the fluid is going to drain out of the tank, out of the cavity in here and back into the tank, and then it's draining, and then in a second it will start the drying process. And now you can see it's in the drying process. This is very similar to how the audio desk works, okay? Pretty regularly built. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I empty out the fluid using this machine. And then I'm going to examine the fluid to see how dirty it is. 
What I like about this machine is that it has a compression fit on the back of the machine where, where the opening is. And you'll notice I'm struggling to push it on. I like this because uh, the audio desk just has a, an opening. You, you, you unscrew it and the water just comes out. This way you can uh, fit a tube to it and direct the fluid to wherever you want it, which I think is a very convenient thing. The tube uh, and the fitting are part of what uh, you get with the machine, which I like also. So now I'm uh, turning this little petcock there, and oh, I said petcock, and um, that lets the fluid out. And I'm draining it into this this um, plastic jug so I can look at the fluid. Otherwise, you would normally just put it in the toilet or or into the sink. However, I do want to examine it, so I am saving it. So here's the water. It came out. Clearly, it's yellow, not clear, and so the water's dirty. But I don't see, I don't see much in the way of suspended particulate matter. But I guess the ultrasonic might have actually pulverized it into a fine kind of dust. See, that's the dirt I wiped out of the chamber.